Okay. Let me let me thanks uh, the faculty member of uh, the economics department of uh, University of Crete for inviting me here. Uh, it's my great pleasure to to be here because I really love uh, Crete, so it's it's also an opportunity to visit uh, Crete one more. Um, and uh, I, I will present you. Huh? Yeah. And uh, I will present you a joint work with uh, Panagiotis Fotis. Uh, uh, Panagiotis works for uh, the Competition Authority, the Greek uh, Competition Authority. So it has. Uh, uh, many ideas on uh, on these uh, issues, and one of them uh, was uh, the question about whether firms prefer to collude or to settle with uh, the competition uh, authorities. We try to to study and to answer this question in a framework where uh, firm firms have uh, pose, uh, uh, unilateral overlapping ownerships uh, in other uh, firms in uh, uh, competitors. And uh, I would like to, to show you a brief uh, outline of uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, I, I will first introduce to, to the idea of uh, the settlement procedure uh, and then uh, to, to the framework of uh, overlapping uh, ownership. Uh, I, I will uh, show you some uh, real world cases, uh, some uh, overlapping ownerships from uh, specific uh, industries in order to get a better idea of, of what is uh, this framework. And then we'll go to, to look into the two choices of firms, to collude or to settle, okay? We will uh, uh, build on uh, a theoretical modeling setup and uh, we will try to derive some uh, useful uh, intuition from uh, the results uh, coming from the comparison of the profits of the firms when collude and when uh, settle. Then we will discuss our main findings. We can uh, uh, give some ideas for future research, and then we will conclude our uh, presentation. Okay, I'll try to be uh, as fast as possible, but uh, also uh, uh, smooth enough to understand everything. So this is. Um, an introduction to the settlement procedure. The settlement procedure introduced by the European Commission in June 2008. In fact, the European Commission in this uh, initiative tried to convince firms to uh, enter a procedure that grants them uh, a reward when admitting their participation uh, in a cartel collusion. Okay. Its objective is not to replace the standard enforcement for cartel cases. Okay. In fact, it tends to simplify and speed up the handling of cases, okay? We all know that competition authorities have limited resources that have to allocate them in many cases. So many initiatives like the leniency programs and the settlement procedure aims exactly at better allocating these resources, okay? And uh, subsequently, to reduce the numbers of appeals against the decision of competition authorities 
that uh, have gains to devote, dedicate many resources uh, to deal with uh, this, uh, um, the, this uh, cause that also raise some administrative costs, of course, okay? So which, which is the optimal for a competition authority? What, what a, a competition authority uh, really wants to, to earn from uh, the settlement procedure is to convince, incentivize all firms or culture firms to enter the center procedure. Okay? And uh, how a competition authority can do that is by rewarding a reduction in the cartel fine. Uh, for the time being, uh, this reduction is usually 10%, but there are some cases, for, for instance, in Greece, uh, this uh, uh, amount is 15%. Okay, so the 10% is uh, a weighted, uh, an average, and what is, uh, uh, what is the common practice now in uh, the European area. As I told you, what really a competition authority envision from the settlement procedure is to induce all cartel firms to participate. Why? Because this allows a better allocation of resources, and then competition authorities can deal with uh, more cases, and by this can increase the deterrence effect of their enforcement action. And uh, now we can discriminate between two kinds, two types of settlement procedure, the hybrid one and the non-hybrid one. When all firms participate, all cartel firms participate, enter the settlement procedure, then we have the non-hybrid case. But when some of the undertakings enter into the settlement procedure, then the hybrid settlement procedure arises. Okay? So the challenging question is how does the existence of unilateral overlapping ownership affect the incentives of firms to enter the settlement procedure or to forgive. Of course, there is a huge size of literature that uh, studies many uh, aspects of uh, the competition effects of the overlapping uh, ownership. However, this is uh, the first, I think, uh, I hope, first uh, uh, formal attempt to focus on the effects of overlapping ownerships on their decision, on firm decisions to enter the settlement procedure or to uh, collude. Now, I, I refer to, to the idea of overlapping ownerships, okay? Uh, we, we consider here two types of overlapping uh, ownerships. Um, and we try to discriminate between uh, partial common ownership and partial cross ownerships uh, based on the related uh, literature. We can deduce that partial common ownerships, okay, we, we use the acronym CNO, okay, uh, exist when institutional investors, like uh, funds, for instance, hold stakes in competing firms, thereby influence their corporate strategy. And this is what makes the partial common ownerships significantly differ from partial cross ownerships. We use the acronym CRO here. Uh, because in this case, the latter one, 
firms acquire rival firm stakes in the form of investment with no control rights. And therefore, they disregard the impact of their actions on the other firms' corporate strategy. Okay, so here, in the latter case, we consider that firms invest, it's a pure investment in an other firms. Therefore, they do not attempt to uh, affect the corporate strategies of the targeted firms. In this slide, we have gathered the the cases where the European Commission dealt with uh, from 2001 until 2022. Uh, and uh, we present the case with the highest cartel fines. There are, uh, there are 10 cases, but in fact, uh, are more cases because some of them, they deal with two or three sub cases. Okay? And, uh, and in, in, the, in the fourth volume, we have the fines. And in the last volumes, we can see how many applicants get into the leniency programs and how many applicants choose the settlement procedure. We can find two interesting things here. The first one, is that the applicants that choose the settlement procedure are at least equal with the number of applicants that get into the leniency program. And uh, the second interesting thing is that some, in some cases, we have the hybrid set of cases, which means that only some firms of the cartel get into the settlement procedure, whereas there are some other cases where all cartel firms chose to settle with the competition authority. Okay? So this is uh, our discrimination, as I told you, between the hybrid and the non-hybrid cases. Now, uh, we will go to, to, we will proceed by looking into some details about these industries, okay? The first industry question is the banking industry. And here we have the shareholders of each firm. In parentheses, you can see the percentage uh, of shares that each uh, shareholder uh, owns in each firm. Okay. What is interesting here is that there are many institutional investors that own a share in many competitive firms. For instance, I have tried to, to, to better present it by, by have different colors okay, for each, uh, for each uh, institutional investor. For instance, with uh, red, we have the Black Roll Rock Investor Management. And you can see that this fund own shares in Berkeley's, in RBS, in HSBC, and in Societal General. In green, we have the Black Rock. In uh, blue, you have the Black Roll Fund Advisors. And uh, in green, uh, excuse me, in uh, purple, you have the, the Vanguard Group that also owns uh, uh, shares in Berkeley, RBS, Citigroup, Credit Agricole, Societe General, and uh, Matching. Okay, 
So, from this picture, we can understand that there is evidence about a common owner's case. Hmm? Some, some fans own shares in many rivals, and their, <coughs> their uh, uh, percentage is quite high in many cases. Of course, a better example would be the truck manufacturing industry, where the Volkswagen Group owns, fully owns, the two most uh, eminent uh, manufacturers of trucks like MAN and Scania. Okay? And both of them belong to the same group, Volkswagen. Here is also another example of common ownership. Volkswagen can affect the corporate strategy of man and Scania, of course. Eh? And these are competing firms. So, firms reported in the truck manufacturing industry have again seen one hybrid settled case. The uh, key case, if we go back. Here, you can see that we have uh, allocated an acronym in its case. So in this case, uh, we have uh, an obvious uh, common uh, ownership uh, case. Firms reported in the banking industry have again in the remaining three hybrid set of cases, which is the three-way banana split, the Essex Express case, the Sterling Labs, the Euro interest rate derivatives, and the Yen interest rate derivatives. Okay. Which is the conclusion? The conclusion is that uh, common, partial common uh, ownerships is more closely linked to the hybrid set cases. It's, it's an evidence that in this in these industries, common ownership is present, and perhaps this is related to the hybrid set cases. This is an evidence. We don't know if it's uh, true or not, but we will try also to see if uh, the theoretical predictions uh, get into this result. And now. Let's proceed to two other markets to start to see the ownership uh, structure in the SCR systems and then to the building manufacturing industry, both for automotive. So uh, here you can see that the major shareholder of Volkswagen Group also holds some shares in the BMW. But you can see that the first one here is the last one here. Okay. And the second one, the Vaga group, also uh, holds some shares in the BMW, but uh, it's not so, as high. So here, and the same is also in, in, in this uh, industry, in the bearing manufacturing industry. Also, we have some firms that own shares in competing firms, okay. but here seems that it seems that uh, firms cannot directly affect the corporate strategy of other firms because they hold a very low percentage. So it's more like uh, it's, it's closer. We can better interpret this uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, holdings as uh, a, a pure investment. Now, the, the interesting thing is that these firms that reported in the bearings for automotive application manufacturing have against in one 
non-hybrid set case, the AB case for automotive uh, buildings. And firms reporting in the SCR system for diesel passenger car industry have again seen the remaining one non-hybrid cell cartel cell case. What we can uh, conclude from here that cross ownership is more closely linked to non-hybrid set cases. So it's the opposite. One evidence that we can uh, say from uh, uh, studying these uh, figures, these tables, is that firms against in uh, common ownership are related to hybrid set case and firms that engage in cross ownerships, uh, they, they, they have different uh, objectives and incentives to get into the settlement case, uh, the settlement procedure. Therefore, we have non-hybrid set cases. Okay. This is the motivation for our paper. Our goal is to challenge this, let's say, uh, empirical, it's not empirical, of course, it's, uh, the evidence that common ownership is more li likely to lead to hybrid set cases, uh, but uh, cross ownership is more uh, closely related to non hybrid set cases. Our strategy is to study the effect of these two types of uh, ownerships of firms' incentives to settle or to collude. In order to do so, uh, we use uh, a quite simplified model, okay, uh, with two cost asymmetric competing firms, where one firm poses some stakes in the other. So we have unilateral overlapping owners. The objective of, uh, of uh, competition authorities, recall that is to induce all cartel firms to enter the settlement uh, procedure. So our main finding is that this is more likely to arise in equilibrium under cross shareholding rather than under common owners, okay? And uh, this finding well serves the goal of this paper, eh? because using this theoretical model the setup that I will present you, well reflects what I have shown uh, in, uh, in the previous figures. I repeat that this is a quite simplified model. Okay, uh, one can say that uh, it's uh, too simplified to reflect uh, all these uh, interconnections. Uh, one may also say that uh, simplicity is a virtue. Uh, so we consider two firms, firm I, firm one, and firm two, competing a la Cournot. Facing the first demand function, P equal one minus Q, where Q is the total uh, production outcomes of uh, the two firms. The firms produce a homogeneous final good at cost at this quadratic uh, cost, okay? Where this is uh, a factor that a uh, parameter that take values one or W. So uh, w can take values from 0 to 1, meaning that when the W is equal to 1, then the two firms are cost symmetric. Otherwise, when W is lower than 1, then W2 is lower than W1, and therefore firm 2 is more efficient than firm 1. Okay. 
And now we have to introduce the um, ownership uh, structure and we have the parameter mi which denotes the share of firm i in firm j. As we assume unilateral overlapping ownership, we consider that mi can take values from 0 to 0 0.5 and mj is equal to 0. So only one um, have a share in the other firms equity cap. And each firm can now choose between breaching a collusive agreement with its rival, in which case they form a cartel and they act as a monopolist, or they settle, uh, each one can settle with the competition authority to benefit from the percentage reduction on the cartel fine, of course, due to entering the settlement procedure. And any question regarding the modeling setup? Yeah, of course. And I will answer you exactly in this uh, slide. What would happen? In it, in the case where firms face linear costs, if they are symmetric, then in the cartel case, they could split the production and also the profits. Right? What would happen if uh, firms are asymmetric? Which firm would produce the monopoly outcome, the efficient one. And how would profits will would share between the two firms? No one knows, but it's not so, uh, so fair for one firm to produce a whole output and then share the profits or in a way to sell the profits. Um, but uh, many researchers uh, have tried to answer. Many, many solutions have... Uh, um, so in order to get an uh, results, we chose to have uh, quadratic in which, case, in which case, the films allocate the output exactly like a monopolist allocates outputs between two plants. Okay, so consider a monopolist that owns two plants who split in some way its whole production and the, in, in each plant has a different marginal production here is exactly the, the same idea the goal of the monopolist is to maximize the following profit function which is total revenues minus total cost and this is something that the monopolist, the cartel monopolist, will get for sure. Minus something. What is this something? Is the cartel fine? It's a percentage over its revenue. But this is realized only in the case that the cartel is detected. 
Therefore, we have a parameter here, rho, which denotes the probability that the cartel will be detected. Okay, so we have some revenues, some uh, profits that the monopolies would get for sure, and some, let's say, cost, a fine, that is realized only in the case that the cartel is detected. Now, to simplify the calculus, we consider that this K is 10% as the current European practice. Okay. And uh, if we solve uh, the game, we will get this, uh, this uh, uh, equilibrium output, uh, which uh, is affected by the costs, uh, which film is efficient and uh, inefficient. Now, what would happen in the case that cartel, the, that the two firms choose to settle with the competition authority? Here we follow the Haas and Paha for modeling overlapping uh, ownership. Let me first begin with the target film, okay? Not the film that poses an overlapping ownership, the target film. So the target film has its own revenues minus its production cost, of course. And this term can be multiplied by this factor or not. So we use this dummy variable, which take value one in the case of cross ownerships. Therefore, in this case, the target firm, the profit of the target, target uh, firm is reduced by by the percentage that the other firm holds in this firm, because it has to give some profits to the other. But in the case of cross ownership, this term disappears. And this is the main difference in the, in, from the modeling perspective, okay, between cross and common ownerships according, of course, to the, the Haas and Pach. And this term is, again, it's common in, in, in both cases. And what is it? Is the penalty that the cartel firm has. But now, this is reduced, OK, by the gaining of entering the settlement procedure. So X reflects the percentage reduction of the cartel fine due to settling. For, for the firm, for the control firm, for the firm posing the minority holding, in the other, this function is exactly the same. Mj is zero. Okay? So the control firm does not have a preference for cross or common ownership structure. This profit function is exactly the same because the other firm does not hold any, any share in the control firm. And this is the equilibrium outputs, again, for k equal to 0 0.1. Again, everything depends uh, on uh, uh, the cost parameters and, of course, in the uh, in the uh, uh, ownership rate, 
And these results are consistent with the related literature summarized by Lee and Zweig, where the firm increasing its overlapping ownership chooses to decrease its output. The target firm chooses to increase its output, but total output is lower. Therefore, overlapping ownership softens competition. Okay. So everything is according and consistent with the related literature. And we have to do now, we have to compare the profit function of each firm when it chooses to enter the settlement procedure and when it chooses to collude. So we have this difference, in fact, for each firm in the case of cross, cross and common ownership for the control firm and for the target uh, firm. OK, these are quite uh, huge. So I, I, I put them here. But what really matters is to see how the existence of overlapping ownership affects this profit difference. For this reason, we calculate the first derivative of each difference function with respect to cross and common shares of firm I in firm J. And now, this is what we get. Under unilateral common ownership, we get these functions. This is for firm I, the control firm, and for firm J, the target firm. Look that this derivative, it's always positive, whereas this derivative, it's always negative. Whereas under unilateral cross ownership, both derivatives are positive. What does it mean? It means that when we have common ownership, the control firm refers, look that, recall that these differences are the profits of the firms when sending minus the, the profit of the firms when uh, getting to the cartel, okay? So when this is positive, it means that this firm increases its preference for settling when the share that holds on the other firm increases. But this has a negative impact on the target firm. The target firm prefers the cartel formation as the other firm holds a higher share in the target firm. Whereas under cross ownership, both firms are better off when the control firm increases its minority shareholding. Therefore, regardless of whether the efficient or the inefficient firm increases its cross-holding level, both firms are provided with higher incentives to enter the settlement procedure. Okay, this is a general outcome for any the control firm is the efficient and the target firm is the inefficient or the control firm is the inefficient and the target is the efficient, okay? When the reference shareholder of either firm increases its minority shares in the other, the control firm faces higher incentives to settle as opposed to the target firm, which increases its preference for collusion. What we can conclude from these statements? 
that in the case of partial cross ownerships, it's more probable to see non-hybrid set cases. Why? Because both firms are better off by entering the settlement procedure as uh, the cross level increases. The opposite holds for partial common ownership. Here, it's more probable to see hybrid set cases. Why? Because the one firm prefers the settlement procedure, the other prefers to say in the cartel. And recall that this is exactly what we have seen by the overlapping structure uh, evidence that I, I showed in the, in, in, the, in the beginning of the presentation. Eh? In the case, recall that in the case that we had cross ownerships, we, we, we found that it's more likely to be related to the non hybrid. For, for the time being, we have seen that what we noticed. Uh, the overlink structure can be well explained by this simplified model. Hmm? However, in noticed that in most of cases we have bilateral overlapping structures, non unilateral. Of course, we use these simplified models to better understand the interligances in these uh, cases. But of course, this is a small whole framework. I agree that bilateral may better reflect many real world cases. However, and trust me, adding one more parameter in this modeling setup, MJ, making MJ positive instead of zero, makes the right equilibrium outcomes quite complex. Any useful intuition by studying and analyzing uh, the equilibrium outcomes. Uh, uh, in the unilateral case, we could derive these equilibrium outcomes, and it's quite easy to see that this is positive, always positive, this is always negative, these are always positive. When adding one more parameter, because here this is also multiplied by 1 minus mj, uh, in, in the case of common ownership, things become much more complex. So the only solution that we can do in that case is to use numerical simulations. And uh, we have done these numerical simulations. And in order to, uh, to help you understand one dissimulation. So uh, let us note this parameter here, rho i uh, denote by this uh, with a subscript x hat, denote the cartel detection probability that makes firm i indifferent between colluding and settling. There will be a rho a detection probability that makes each firm indifferent between settling or colluding. Okay? If the cartel detection probability is higher than this critical level, 
then we can understand that firms prefer to enter the settlement procedure because it's more probable to be uh, detected. If the detection probability is lower than this critical level, then the firms prefer to collude with its rival. And this is what we can uh, find from numerical simulation. What we have done here, this is the critical probability for the inefficient firm, or for firm one, when this firm increases its minority share in the other. And we have many cures now. Why? Because M2 contains different values as well. We have bilateral now uh, overlapping ownership. For common overlapping ownership, we have this outcome. Look that as MI increases, this decreases regardless of M2, but as M2 increases, this increases as well. And the same it's for the other firm, for firm two. If we could derive a finding from here, is that the firm of which the reference shareholder increasing its uh, cross ownership, overlapping ownership, faces higher incentives to enter the settlement procedure. Okay. In this case, you can see by these lines that the critical probability decreases. Therefore, this firm has higher probabilities to enter the settlement procedure. Okay. For firm two, as this increases, the for any M1 value, we go down slope. Therefore, this probability decreases. No, but no, but when it's lower than zero, it's always prefer the, the one possibility that, uh, that than the other. As opposed to the target firm, which increases its preference for the cartel formation. Look that if this is the target firm, okay, as M1 increases, this critical probability increases and prefers the cartel formation. The same holds here. If this is the target firm, as M2 increases, we go upward. And therefore, the critical probability increases with, and therefore prefers the cartel formation for more parameter values. <laughs> this, uh, I, I, I uh, recall that. May I ask something as well? <clears throat> so it seems to me that the one on the left has the lines closer to each other than the one on the right. It seems to me that the ones on the left are uh, clearly, let's say, the ones on the right are somewhat complex. Is this uh, does mean anything? Is this my interpretation of the picture is correct? Or because I see the yeah, perhaps it could be uh, it could be correct, but uh, qualitatively, no, qu qualitatively for the main findings, this doesn't affect uh, our main uh, conclusion. Uh, everything depends. Uh, of course, uh, on uh, on the cost differences, and for the cross bilateral cross overlapping ownership cases, what we can see is that now in both cases for the target 
and the control firms, the curves goes down, which is exactly the same as what would happen with the case of unilateral. Eh? In this case, an increase in the cross holding level of either firm provides both firms with higher incentives to enter the settlement procedure. Again, here, as the common ownership level of one firm increases, makes this firm prefers a settlement and the other prefers cartel. So again, here, the hybrid cartel cases are more probable. In this case, in the cross overlapping ownership, both firms goes downward. What means that the non-hybrid cases is again more probable. In fact, the results that we have derived from the unilateral uh, overlapping ownership seems to be quite robust, even if we, uh, even without adding one more parameter that makes things quite complex. So to conclude, the objective of competition authorities to induce all cartel firms to settle, meaning that non-hybrid set case arise, is more likely to arise in equilibrium under cross set holding. Such partial overlapping ownership agreements could enhance the effectiveness of the settlement procedure as opposed to the negative impact of competition under a leniency program. On the other hand, common ownership affects its firm's incentives to, fend, to settle in a completely different way. Therefore, this type of horizontal agreements leads to hybrid settlement cases, and as a result, it undermines the effectiveness of settlement procedure. This is very interesting because competition authorities should be very careful when dealing with the competition effects of common ownerships. And this is what happens in reality. Competition authority care much more for common ownership agreements than, than for cross holdings. Because in this case, firms can affect the corporate strategy of rivals. And we saw that this is difficult case. And bilateral overlapping ownerships does not change our results from the unilateral uh, case uh, qualitative. So this was my presentation. Hope you found it uh, useful. If you have.